Hi there folks, it's Matthew Seville here with SLRLounge.com and we're doing a demonstration of camera raw presets for nature and landscape photos. We are using the new SLR Lounge preset system for camera raw, it's version 5.1 and it's available and compatible with camera raw programs such as Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Bridge that come with the Creative Cloud and CS6 versions of Adobe Photoshop. Now this particular 5.1 preset system is not compatible with the older versions of Photoshop such as CS5 or CS4. However, you guys can still follow along because the premise here still applies to any image in any camera raw program. So let's go ahead and open up these images. I'm gonna just open up these four blue filtered images right here. These are from some uh, random adventures. I'm gonna double click on them to open up the camera raw window. And let's just zero out this image and start from scratch here. Camera raw defaults in that little menu option there. Now you can see what the original unedited photo looks like. I've got some really bright highlights, but they're just barely preserved as you can see on the histogram here. And I've got a lot of shadows, but there really isn't much clipping in the original image. Just this tiny little bit down here, which you can see by hitting U to show the underexposed areas, or you can hit O to show the overexposed areas, which are these little icons up here. Let's dive in and go straight to the presets, keeping in mind that what I wanna do is be efficient here and work quickly. I usually pre-visualize what my final goal is for an image so that I know I'm gonna go straight to my vivid presets and I'm probably going with a light crush to kinda of get those colors really popping or I'm gonna go for an HDR look and maybe let's try, let's go straight to HDR max. And here we go, this is looking great. I'm preserving these highlights, I'm bringing up the shadows, but I've got some beautiful crisp clarity and saturation overall. Let's go look at the basic adjustments and see what is going on here with that S, uh, HDR preset. What I've got is I've reduced the highlights and whites all the way down, I've put the shadows and blacks all the way up, and the contrast I increased because if you leave it at zero and you just crank these settings, the image is still going to look very flat. So that's why we have this preset dialing the contrast way up. Now, to be honest, it could use a little bit more love, but since I've already maxed out all of these settings, what am I going to do? I could increase the saturation a tiny bit, and that would uh, definitely help me out. But I think I'm gonna use a local brush. Let's uh, undo that by hitting Control Z or Command Z. I think I wanna use a local brush because I kind of dislike simply cranking the saturation way up on my landscape photos. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit K to bring up my brushes. And let's look at the brush presets here in this little menu icon. I've got nature-color selected. So let's try maybe sky, cloud, ocean, and let's just brush it over the top here like that. That looks beautiful. Let me try it across the top here as well, get that going on a little bit. And then here's one tip. If you want to erase it off of a section, you can just click this erase button or you can hold down alt and watch see it automatically switches to erase for me. And also notice how the brush size is a little different. I'm gonna hold down alt and I'm just going to brush it off the mountains here because I don't want these mountains to be affected by my sky cloud ocean preset. I'm gonna do that separately. I'm gonna hit new and then I'm going to switch back to that nature-color preset. And let's try that a little bit down here. Just a tiny bit right across the edge right there. That's looking really, really beautiful. Maybe I'll go across the top here like that just to bump it up a little bit more. Honestly, I feel like this is going a little bit over the top. It doesn't look natural now. So what I feel like I should do is hold down Alt and see how the flow also is reduced. If I, hit, if I had the flow all the way up at 100, when I hold down Alt, it would completely erase that effect. But let me hit Control Z to undo that. But if I have the flow set down here at 10 or 20 or something, and I brush it over really quick, it only removes that effect part way. So that's what I wanna go for in this image. I think this looks beautiful right here, so I'm going to leave it and move on to the next shot. If you wanted to do anything else, maybe I could hit G for gradient and do a slight darkening right here up from the bottom just to give it a little bit more natural look because you never want to go too far with the HDR appearance. So that's that and let's look at this next image right here. Here's a really cool black and white scene that I photographed in Joshua Tree National Park here in Southern California. Let's zero this out by, I'm gonna hit H here to go back to my hand tool and let's go camera raw defaults. Now you can see the unedited image here. Again, it's a raw image, so it's kind of flat, 
but I know the direction I want to go in. I want to go straight to my base vivid presets and let's try light crush black and white. Let's try heavy crush black and white. Oh, I got some dust showing up here. Let's talk about dust really quick. I'm gonna hit B to get my dust tool or it's all right up here. But while I'm doing that, I'm gonna hold down the space bar so that I can get the hand tool. And then I'm gonna right click and go to 100% so that now I'm zoomed in here. I'm gonna scroll around by holding down the space bar, clicking and dragging. And I'm gonna hit my right bracket or left bracket to make this brush tool a little bit larger. And let's just brush out that bit of something or other whatever's on that sensor there and let's click on this one get this get this uh, dust out of here wow i've got a really dusty sensor i'm going to take care of this really quick here we go a couple more specs down here and that looks about right now i'm going to hit h again to get back to my hand tool i'm going to right click and just go fit to view and there we go that looks great now the beautiful thing is even though i've applied all of that spot removal to this image i can still go back to my base presets because they won't undo or harm those spot removal adjustments for example i'm going to hit hdr max b and w just to see what happens here and let's try hdr heavy grunge b and w here we go this is what i wanted to accomplish it really nailed the tonality in almost all of this image around here. I've got some nice highlights, I've got some nice shadows, but none of it is too clipped, so I think it's perfect. The only thing I wanna do to adjust this image is maybe brighten, I mean darken the sky over here a little bit because the sun is right here just out of the frame and I can barely see the detail in these clouds. So I'm gonna hit G to get my gradient and I'm gonna to go to my sky cloud ocean tool, but I'm gonna modify it just a tiny bit so that my exposure is just a tiny bit darker. There we go, I'm just gonna drag that across there like this, and then maybe let's bring it in a tiny bit more so that the transition from 100% effect to 0% effect goes from here to here so that this whole area is affected by this graduated filter. Oh, wonderful, I've, re I've re revealed a little bit more dust. Let me hit B again and get rid of that really quick. One, two, H, back to get to the hand tool. And there we go, folks, that was it. Let's move on to the next image. Here we've got another HDR preset. Let's just see how fast I can edit this without trying all sorts of different options and going too crazy with it. Of course, there's always gonna be a little bit of spot removal. If you change lenses in the desert, you're gonna have a few specs. That's just the way it is. Okay, let's hit H to get back to the hand tool here so I can see my presets and everything. Let's go straight to base vivid and go color max HDR. There we go. This really has done a great job overall to the whole image. And really all I think I need to do is correct my white balance because I kind of screwed up on the white balance there. Maybe I went too far right there, 60 something hundred, that looks great. And that's about it. Maybe all I wanna do is bring the blacks down a tiny bit so that the image doesn't look too flat. And there we go, it looks beautiful. If you really like cheating, as I call it, you could bump up your saturation even more, but I'm gonna just leave it somewhere around here and call it good. Let's have a look at this final image here. This is what I wanna talk about as far as a faux HDR or kind of that slightly weird look where you get that kind of the shadows look a little bit too bright and the highlights are kind of preserved almost a little bit too much let's zero out this image and see what it looks like originally it's a very flat image and it doesn't really need HDR processing so if I wanted to I could just go and hit the vivid base import or a light crush or even a heavy crush for color well that was probably too far and that would be it I could go down here to my adjustments and maybe get a little bit of saturation, heavy, maybe heavy saturation, or click on the plus blues option if I have a blue sky, and you can see the difference there. Let me show you a little bit. That's what this preset does. It just kind of adjusts the blues just a tiny bit to darken and saturate them a tiny bit. However, as you can see, this image is still kind of bland. Let's go for that slightly over the top look, and I'm just gonna go straight to HDR max color, and now I feel like we're getting somewhere. This image looks a little bit wonky, but that's obviously what we're going for. I could try a little bit of a curve if I wanted to give it a neutral punch, you know, kind of warm it up while punching it a tiny bit. That's neat. Giving it that pre-dawn, you know, that sunrise warm pink color overall. I think, however, this what this really needs is a slight bit of darkening. Let's try that in my adjustments presets here. Just a uh, whole stop, that's maybe too far. Actually, I think I could go with either of these. I could live with this right here. This looks beautiful. And if anything, the shadows look very natural instead of that wacky HDR look that I said I was originally gonna go for. If you do want to accomplish that, the fastest way to accomplish that is to just crank your clarity way up. 
and it will give you that gritty HDR over the top type look. Also, if you want, I think brightening up the exposure overall, this would give you, you can see it's got that weird HDR type look. I'm gonna go back down to negative one because I do like the natural appearance overall. And there you have it, folks. For my editing style overall, this is how I would approach nature and landscape images. I do a lot of HDR type images where I'm just barely preserving the highlights and letting the shadows just kind of be dark. So you can see that's why I expose to just barely preserve my highlights. And then a preset like these HDR presets work great on your nature photos. Of course, they will also work great if you do a lot, you know, macro flower photography or wildlife photography, any type of outdoor nature photography. There's probably going to be a good foundation preset in here that you can build on to achieve the look you're going for. So that's all for now. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and take care.